Hi everybody, a little bit of a different video today. Today I wanted to talk about finding an art style for solo RPGs. So there's a lot of methods that people use to record solo RPGs. There's journaling, there's voice recording, there's video recording, which is what I do, and I usually combine it with art of some kind. Um, I wanted to see whether I could be a bit more performative in the way that I do this, to generate a bit more interest, but also to make me more immersed into the actual story. So there's a few goals that I have uh, when approaching this kind of thing. So art for solo RPGs. So it's got to be fast, first and foremost. That's a big factor of it. It's got to be very fast. So while I'm doing it, I don't want it to slow me down, uh, and I don't want it to basically hamper my play experience. That's a big part of it. It also has to be intuitive. So I think that this is important as well. It needs to be something where I can take unfamiliar subject matter that sometimes comes up in solo RPGs and I can still illustrate it in a certain way. It's got to be flexible as well, right? I have to be able to draw landscapes and characters and all sorts of stuff with it. And you know, optionally, um, it will be nice if it were showy. Because I think that will maybe garner a bit more interest in the videos. It will maybe have something that people can look at and that can be actually kind of interesting to see. So I've come up with a few methods that I thought might be useful. Um, I might find more in the future. So the plan is, um, what I'm going to do to test this out is I am going to, for each of these um, methods, I'm going to draw a landscape and I'm also going to draw a figure. And this test is going to be, let's have an arbitrary number, like two minutes long per landscape or figure. So I got two minutes to draw a landscape, I got two minutes to draw the figure, and we'll see how that goes. Uh, we'll see which method kind of comes out on top. I have a few ideas, but, you know, I've been testing this out a bit and I thought it would be fun to show the process that I go through when I'm trying to figure out this kind of creative stuff. So without any further ado, let's get into it. This first one requires a bunch of stuff and let's see how it goes. I'm going to grab my paper towel, got my ink bottle right here. I'm going to set a timer for two minutes. Two minute timer. All right. Okay. Three, two, one, let's go. So this first method is essentially ink smudging. So I decided that I'm gonna draw a tower of some kind. So I, you know, set up the basic prerequisites for that right here. Uh, usually I will have some kind of brush handy as well. I forgot to actually grab that out. So I'm just gonna use uh, this more felt tip kind of brush. Uh, you know, this is kind of nice method. I don't know how much I'm going to be speaking while doing this because I got to concentrate on actually getting a bunch of the details in. And this one does require a bit more concentration. So this style can be a bit messy, especially with the ink bottle right there is a little bit scary, uh, but it can be a very expressive as well. And I really like some of the results I get from it. One of the things that I found with it was that I do need some kind of white paint in order to really get it to work out good so that I can like, you know, embellish it with additional details and stuff like that. I am not quite sure, but I was thinking today I might try using a white paint marker instead. I'm trying to use this white paint marker, which seems to be doing okay. Uh, we'll see how well it holds up later on, but all right, there we go. That's some kind of fortress. You can kind of already see a little bit of it, you know, appearing. Um, and that was pretty quick. So I did give myself two minutes, so I'm just going to use the rest of the time to try to embellish it with additional details. But if I were just doing this quickly, you know, it is done. I was looking at the timer wrongly. I didn't have half a minute to go. I had half a minute left. Oh, well, I kind of finished it within that time anyway. It's kind of interesting how fast it goes though, but that looks okay to me, right? That does kind of look like a castle of some sort. I could put in some clouds easily and really finish it off. But we're giving ourselves two minutes here. And let's just try drawing a figure. Um, let's restart the timer. 
And let's say some kind of ogre. Some kind of ogre will be good, I think. Three, two, one, go. All right, uh, ogre. Let's see. I'm not sure how I'm gonna do this, but now let's go with that. That's fine. So I'm just gonna try to like finagle this into something that kind of looks like an ogre. I've been watching Kim Dias Holm, whose YouTube I will link down in the description below, who does this method a lot better than I do. Um, still very very new to it, but I do like the texture that the initial smudge gives and how much um, improvisation that I have to do on the fly. It is very fun and it kind of tickles a weird part in my brain. Now there are a few downsides to this, especially when I'm doing this for like a solo RPG thing or when I'm doing this live. Um, one of the downsides being that rolling dice is kind of, well it's a dicey affair because there's an ink bottle right there, right? Um, let's see, how much time do I have left? I have a minute left, okay. The nice thing about it is that it does tend to result in these really expressive looking drawings. I don't have a ton of control over it, but sometimes that can be a good thing, right? Like, sometimes uh, not having full control over it can actually lead to interesting things, like a Bob Ross kind of mentality. And that kind of looks more skull-like than I wanted, so within the last half minute here, let's see whether we can add a little bit more detail to this. That makes it a little bit less skull oriented, I guess. Um, let's go with something like that. And maybe, yeah, let's turn these into teeth here. Yeah, something like that will be good. Some kind of ogre. And we are out of time. It looks okay. I think I could do a little bit better than that. Let's try doing a bit more of a fuller figure as well. Because initially I was just gonna draw a landscape and a character, but you know what, this takes almost no time at all, so let's keep going. I do realize that, yeah, um, this is getting really messy. You can see an ink blotch over there. Thank God my mat is black as well. Clean that up a little bit. Maybe put the paper towel on top of the mat. <laughs> maybe that's a better idea. But yeah, let's try doing uh, maybe a little bit more of a figure. Let's do the two minute time limit as usual. Wait, before I do that, Let's actually figure out what we're gonna draw. Uh, let's draw a ranger of some sort, right? I think that'll be fine. So three, two, one, go. Uh, ranger. Don't even know how I'm gonna draw this. Eh, we'll figure it out. Eh, okay, that looks fine. Yeah, can work with that. So the way I'm picturing it is that there's this kind of arch going over in the character and just a hit right here. Maybe make them an elf of some kind, something like that. And maybe they are holding some kind of bow or maybe they have it kind of sleeved across. I think that's fine too. The thing about this is that since it goes so fast, um, you have to be okay with it not being perfect, you know? Of course, if I'm doing an actual solo play session and I'm describing this as I go, I usually will have a bit more than two minutes, but this is kind of a good test to see whether I can do it within a short amount of time when I'm under pressure and I'm not really... Well, the idea was that I wasn't going to be talking much during this, but obviously that has changed. And obviously I don't really plan my videos out all that much. But that does look like some kind of ranger. Got a bunch of arrows here. And uh, yeah, you know what? We'll give him a little bit of a bow. Uh, yeah, let's go like that. Why not? Sure, I don't know if that's how you actually hold a bow, but... Yeah, that doesn't look like the best ranger ever, but it was done within two minutes. I still have a few seconds left to go, and time's up. So that does look like some kind of ranger, um, and I think this method works really well. Um, of course, you can touch it up afterwards and cheat like I'm doing right now. Uh, but the problem with this, like I said, is that rolling dice around this, a little bit scary. Of course, I could, you know cap it up after each drawing, but then I'll be uncapping it and capping it constantly. And that leads to its own issues, as I found out uh, recently when I was capping it and uncapping it and it got knocked over as a result. So I'm still trying to figure that out, but yeah, that's the first method. So let's go with pros and cons. Ink, wash. So pros, right? It's expressive. It's also very uncontrollable. 
unpredictable. Yeah, let's go with that. That's also a con, but yeah. Expressive, unpredictable. Um, I do like it working with ink because it's very binary. So it's very... Uh, it's got a lot of contrast. I like that about it. Um, cons. Well, the big one is that it's messy. Uh, what else? Actually, that's the main one. It's messy. It's kind of got me a little bit scared to take out the dice and roll it around and stuff. So I have tried to do that with, um, you know, the ink bottle out and everything. Maybe it's just I need to figure out the placement of it. I'm not sure. Maybe I need a dice tray, maybe something else. I have no idea, but it's messy. And I don't really have any stains on my hands as of yet, but it can very quickly lead to stains. Um, so messy is the big con here. Oh, and one more pro is that it's very able to create fast amounts of detail. And if I'm able to smudge it just right, I can get really, really good detail really, really fast. As can be seen from, uh, for example, the foliage around here, and let's say like the forehead around here. And a lot of that is unplanned, but I'm able to kind of meld it into my workflow as it were. And that's something I'm fairly comfortable with. Okay, moving on to the next method. Okay, this next method I have a little bit less experience with, um, but basically using Copic markers and using that as a base so that I can imply some detail and use a pen over that. So I'll probably be using a brush pen of some kind. So I'm using this probably. Uh, so let's give it a shot. Again, two minutes, three, two, one. Oh wait, I should probably uncap it. <laughs> always forget which side is which, and I can't cap these on the end, which is always annoying. So, yep, three, two, one, let's go. So, Fortress is per usual, same as just now. Uh, we'll do something similar with like uh, the grass and, you know, maybe having, maybe let's make it a bit more ruined this time. Yeah, that's kind of cool. something like that. And the cool thing about this is that you can use various kinds of uh, markers and layer them on and you can get varying amounts of detail. Let me see if I can do that real quick. I should have probably uncapped all of these to start with since I'm doing a test here, but that's fine. So something like that. And uh, that kind of gives you a bunch of gradients to work with. And then of course afterwards, you can go in and of detail here and there. You know, this one doesn't have to be exactly the same as the last ruin tower. Uh, and I can add a little bit of more detail on the grass there. Got about a minute left. Um, I think that this one is kind of good for things that are more painterly. Like for landscapes such as these, uh, this works pretty well. And now that I'm thinking about it, there's no reason to stick to any one technique, obviously. Uh, I should have mentioned that at the start, but this is just me experimenting and, you know, seeing what can potentially work for future solo RPG streams and videos and stuff like that. I do think that this kind of technique has almost a watercolorly, watercolory look to it, uh, as you can see from the markers. And I do like that part about it. And it kind of gives me a good scaffolding to work off, almost like a pencil on the drawing. I have three seconds left, but let's not worry about that. That's done. So I do like this quite a bit. My problem with it, and we'll get into that as we're going into the figure, I think. My problem with it is actually the lack of contrast. So let's try to get these uncapped so that I can quickly draw. Two minutes, three, two, one, go. Okay, let's draw an ogre like we did just now. This time we'll start with the lighter brush. Maybe make this one a bit more organic. Yeah, a little bit of the shoulder there. So I can already see where this is kind of going, so kind of detail out some of the darker shadows there. But while I do like this, uh, yeah, it reminds me of like painting because it's a lot more, well, it's a lot less binary and I do like that about it. But also at the same time, I do love the contrast that ink gives and kind of mixing the two up is something that I do enjoy. But I also kind of like just having completely dark inks like I did previously with the previous method, the ink wash. I like that a lot too. I think uh, give a bit of a 
hooked here there and you know the outline doesn't have to follow it exactly one thing that i tend to do a lot of is a lot of hatching as you can see it's kind of a habit of mine and that can be very very time consuming so for this kind of style i try to edit here and there but i don't try to do it everywhere because that will take forever let's give them a bit thicker eyebrows mostly are the points of interest i'd say so that's where i try to put them the hatching that is i think we're almost done here we got seven seconds left and time that's pretty good for a random ogre okay we'll draw the final one which is the ranger kind of thing i guess an elven ranger let's stick to that and then we'll go into the pros and we'll go into the cons two minutes go let's uh do the ears first let's start with the head um maybe yeah something like that maybe oh maybe he's behind a bush that could be cool maybe he's kind of in more of an action pose let's go with something like that this time make things harder for ourselves why not yeah good yeah the thing i like about this is that you can kind of pull out shadows really easily while also still keeping it very loose and non-committal so like you see here i have a lot of the top part that didn't end up being the head but it kind of still worked so eyes nose kind of something going on here with the bowstring i think maybe he's like pulling the bow backwards that might be interesting actually i mean it's a bit hard to sh indicate that and i might feel like doing that but that's okay like he it looks more like he's holding a harp anyway um got 40 seconds left i should actually start inking this thing the thing i like about this is that like i said you can kind of pull out values really easily but i do wish there were a bit more contrast this feels way too painterly for my liking at least when i think of old school dnd art i have 10 seconds left i think of you know primarily black and white of course there were watercolor artists and stuff like that but there you go uh ran out of time there not really clear what the arm is doing there but it's fine but yeah like i was saying um there were obviously watercolor artists and there were oil painters and stuff like that what i associate the osr with at least is a lot of high contrast ink drawings you know so uh we'll call this method the uh, marker method very uh very imaginative there let me cap these on and make sure they go on the proper ones <laughs> i think it's this one yeah yeah it's this one um so the marker method pros and cons pros it's more like painting and uh for me painting is something that i'm used to i started with painting i mostly self-taught but yeah it's a lot easier for my brain to adjust and it's easier to show grayscale values like it's easier to make gradients so maybe i'll just write gradient so that's something that's good about it it can also create a very nice scaffolding that you don't have to stick to like i said this part here wasn't part of the head look, still looks fine so um it makes a very loose scaffolding right and that's also one of the downsides of it uh, so going over to the cons uh there's a lack of contrast and at least for me there's also a lack of texture uh of course you can add it on with inks and stuff like that but we're going for speed here i don't think it's that fast either so um lack of texture yeah for me i found myself like having to force myself to speed up a bit so it's not that fast it's not slow either it's really it's really something that i'm trying to optimize but it's not slow it's just you know not all that fast when compared to something like the ink technique and this is a very weird kind of thing that i'm doing where i'm really trying to find stuff that allows me to draw things within two minutes that's not the norm but you know when you're doing something like solo rpgs and you're trying to do something else while you're doing the drawing and you're kind of like doing it in a video i think it's important to have those kind of pros and cons attached to each of these techniques so that you can figure out on the fly well i can figure out on the fly what is the best method to use for a specific scene it's almost like i liken it to people who make terrain like black magic craft or miscast and them putting out the terrain during the tabletop session 
So that's what I'm likening it to at the moment. Let's move on to the next technique, the final one. All right, this final method, pretty fun. We're just gonna be using a regular pen. Uh, I have a Pilot High Tech C, uh, well, High Tech Point V5 grip, but I think people just call it the High Tech C. So I'm just gonna scribble stuff out. Um, people will refer to this as scribble or doodle art. I think it can be a fun way to, you know, bring out details and stuff. So again, two minutes, three, two, one, let's go. Uh, tower, right? So this is something that anybody can do. That's another good thing about this technique. Um, I'm going to be adding in a few additional things at the end here uh, to kind of bring it together. But you don't really need that, especially if you're not working within a time limit or anything like that. Ooh, there's some like smudging that I can do. I didn't even realize that. That's kind of cool. Makes it a bit messy though. Anyway, um, I kind of like the look of it, especially with how messy and how expressive and gestural it is. I'm gonna just real quick, actually, let's use uh, this one. I'm still working within my time limit here, so I should be cognizant of that um, instead of like constantly reaching for supplies. And I do have to remember that I am on a time limit, uh, speaking of which I have one minute left. So I like using um, this kind of scribble technique with some kind of brush pens or something that is a little bit more, you know, covers a bit more area. Sometimes I'll even bring out like Posca markers, stuff like that. But this kind of gives a pretty good base and it's not that messy. Well, apparently I can smudge it, which does make it messier, but that's kind of cool too, right? I actually kind of like that. Uh, I wasn't aware that these uh, were so smudgy, but that is cool. I like that a lot. Uh, I have, oh, I still have time. So I'm just gonna add a bit more detail here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, let's just go with something like that. Maybe some clouds this time. Yeah, it feels like I ruined that. Let's just uh, try to fix it up in the last three seconds. And yeah, that looks better. There you go. Time's up. Okay, um, that is fine. I kind of don't like the fact that the clouds are there. I'm actually going to fix it up despite the fact that two minutes has passed. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to add a few more little clouds here and there. Just, you know, mess up the piece a little bit, make it a bit more of a landscape. It looks pretty good. Um, I actually, yeah, I wasn't aware that you could actually smudge these things. Obviously, it's going to make it a bit more messy, but that's kind of cool. Unexpected side benefit. Okay, uh, next up is an ogre. I'm going to restart the timer and go. So, when I'm doing this, I'm really just trying to find shapes uh, within the scribbles and... It's kind of similar to the first technique, in a way. I'm just trying to find stuff within the shapes that I'm making, almost semi-randomly, but you know, not completely. I Man, that's smudging. It's actually really, really cool. Like I said, I wasn't aware that that was going to happen because I normally use like a micron for this stuff and that doesn't really smudge all that much. But I was like, you know, for this, I should try out using a tool that probably everyone has access to is just regular, you know, gel pen. And I was like, I should try using something like that so people can follow along at home. But man, that actually might make things a little bit better. It might also be the paper. I'm using a Bristol board paper here, which is very smooth. So that might also be it. So this is almost like abstract, but you can definitely tell that it's some kind of orc, right? And it does have some of the expressiveness of like the earlier ink wash stuff because of that smudging capabilities that I found out about literally in the past minute or two. But without as much of the worry that I'm going to spill an ink bottle. So I do kind of like that. I might be finding a new love art-wise as I record this, which I didn't really expect. Got 10 seconds left. Um, yeah, let's maybe make the teeth a bit more apparent. And there we go. We are done. And if I wanted to go in and add in some more details, which I'm not going to, I could add in some more hatching. I could, you know, make it so that the head was less of a bulbous growth. Uh, <laughs> you know, stuff like that. I could fix it up a little bit, but not really all that necessary. I I like it. Um, Let's restart. Three, two, one, and go. So... Let's maybe have a different angle for the archer for this case. Let's do yeah, let's do something like that. Let's maybe give him longish hair. Why not? Yep. Oh, 
this is an old pen by the way this might be why it's like kind of running out of ink on me this probably like <laughs> i just dug this out i think it's um five years old at minimum i don't know it's, it's really old that's what i'm saying oh man i really like how this kind of scribbling technique can lead to such gestural lines though i was actually i don't really do this kind of scribbling technique all that often i was just watching uh, this guy called matt charcoal do it on his youtube channel and i was just blown away so i'll link that in the description as well but got a minute here let's try using yep gotta remember which side is which and i fucked it up that was not the side i wanted to go for whatever i have less than a minute left i shouldn't worry about it too much uh let's see you know what that's way too thick i'm gonna go for the other side here ah there we go some nice kind of gestural dry brush strokes which i do enjoy quite a bit it's a nice combo and we got let's see 20 seconds left yeah kind of like how i can just slow down and add a little bit more detail here and there which i would do a lot more of if i weren't on a time limit and five four three two one done i like that quite a bit that doesn't look like what i normally draw yeah, you know what? Let's let's do the pros and cons, and then uh, I might want to clean some of this up a bit. So let's just call this like scribble. And pros are that it's very expressive, obviously, like the first one. It's also very quick, much more quick than I expected because I haven't really tried this all that much. There's still the ability to smudge it out and stuff like that. So there's the the ability to imply details still. So I can still imply detail, and that's really cool. And um, with the scribbles, I can even create a gradient of sorts, right? Like, for example, um, I can do something like that, and that kind of goes from dark to light. Um, cons. Uh, well, doesn't really cover a lot of area all that quick, but you can kind of swap that out with a uh, like brush pen. So I'm not sure if this is actually a con, because... It's not something that I actually encounter. Uh, I did mention that I could use like Posca markers, which I didn't end up showing. But just to show what that will look like, I can just like do stuff like that. Same way I would use a brush pen really, but I get a bit less control over the thickness and other stuff. Um, but yeah, this is kind of like a really cool technique and I might actually use this a bit more going forwards. Overall, this is a method that I didn't expect to like as much as I did, and not something that I have tried all that much prior to this video, actually. Uh, this is actually some of my first time doing this doodle technique. I mean, I've done stuff like this in the past, where I will doodle a shape and try to get a monster out of it, but I don't usually go in with a subject matter in mind. So, this turns out to... Well, not be the winner, but it's kind of like the unexpected underdog of this entire fight. Fight? Art fight? <laughs> I don't know. Um, definitely gonna use this a lot more in future. Oh, I should add one more con though, which is that... Yeah, I didn't think that this was gonna be a con, but it is kind of messy uh, if I use, you know, this gel pen. I'm assuming if I use a micron, it won't be as messy, but then I won't get the expressiveness that I want. So it's a bit of a trade-off there. Anyway, those are the three methods. Um, I'm interested to know what you think. Uh, these are methods that I want to try out on future recordings and future live streams, wherein I do solo RPGs, I roll some dice, and then I kind of draw out my adventure as I go. I've been experimenting with a few things, like drawing out the whole session on one piece of paper. Um, and that's why I haven't really been uploading a lot of videos. I've been testing a lot of stuff, but it's been in my own spare time. But this time I thought I'd share some of that with y'all. So if you like the video, uh, like and subscribe, all the regular YouTube nonsense. But also, let me know what you think about different kinds of journaling. There was a video from Paper Dice Games, I believe it's called Paper Dice Games, that went over a few interesting ways to do journaling. And that's what kind of inspired this video. I'll link it in the description below. But let me know what kind of techniques you use when journaling your games. Do you do any art? If you do, what kind of techniques do you do for that? Um, do you make it a comic? Or do you just do text journaling? 
I'm interested to know like what kind of techniques other people use to record their adventures. So uh, I'm gonna wash my hands and I'm gonna go for now. I'll see you around. Bye bye.